Hello everyone out there in podcast land. Welcome back to Adventure Capital, where we not only discuss the entrepreneurial journeys and adventures with founders who have raised capital on WeFunder, but also the different resource providers and mentors helping founders along the way. Huzzah! Today we have Patty Rodriguez and Ariana Stein of Lil Libros, the number one family trusted bilingual children's media publisher built by the community so much representation before we get on with the podcast we're required to let everyone know that anything we say here should not be interpreted as investment advice recommendations or soliciting investments in any company all companies raising on WeFunder are given an equal opportunity to participate in the podcast based on the progress of their campaign WeFunder gang gang take it away so, Patty, Ariana, uh, it's great to have you here. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you for having us. Yeah, thanks for having us. Um, maybe you could start um, by telling us a little bit about how you guys met and came to be running Lil Libros together. Oh, man, that's still a very long story. How, how much time do we have? <laughs> <laughs> about 40 minutes. Okay. You can take all of that for this answer if you want. Uh, we have known each other since we were 12 years old. We met in junior high and, uh, we went to high school together, uh, cried together, partied together. Um, I saw Diana get married. She saw me have children (laughs) and, and my first son who is now going to be 11 in a few months, um, when I was pregnant with him, I was looking for bilingual books that I can share with him and not just bilingual books, um, but books that celebrated our duality as American Latinos in this country, our culture, our traditions, um, and our language. Um, and those books did not exist. So I asked myself, well, what if I create a manuscript and send it out to traditional publishers? I think it's a genius idea. I don't see why they would say no to me. <laughs> I was, and I, I wrote this down. I, I created a proposal and I mailed it off just like, you know, back in the old days, mailing it off. Mm-hmm. And I did get some responses back from some publishers And those that did get back to me uh, did not think this was a genius idea. As a matter of fact, they actually thought it was not marketable. They didn't think uh, that there was a market for bilingual books. They didn't think that there would be enough Latina mothers who would find this interesting or want to share this with their children. Hmm. And going through maybe postpartum depression and just being a new mother and, and, and the weight of, you know, being um, full-time work and full-time mom, I believed them and I got discouraged hmm. and I let go of that idea. And it wasn't until a few years later, I am driving home from the radio station um, and I see police cars and fire trucks on my street and I get closer and I see there's fire coming out of my house, flames coming out of my house. Oh, wow. And I remember parking my car in the middle of the street and just running toward the house. And I get stopped by an officer and tells me, is this your home? And I said, it is, is anybody in there? And they tell me, well, we don't know yet, but you know, I can't let you in until we're done putting the flames out. And I waited, um, and by the grace of God, no one was home, but we lost everything that day in 10 minutes. And I sat there on the sidewalk with the hands on my face, and I just felt that the world was over for us. And those, that fall, those following weeks after that, hap- that incident, I went through a very deep depression 
uh, this black hole. I started questioning my identity. I started questioning who I am as a, as a mother, as a Latina, as a human being. And what is my purpose? What am I supposed to be here? Am I supposed to just, just walk this earth and leave nothing behind? And, and, and I realized how quickly everything could be gone. Mm-hmm. Just in a blink of an eye. And I said, what, what do I have to lose? What am I waiting for? And I remember those books and that idea that I had when I was pregnant. And I told myself, I'm going to find a way to make this happen, not just for my own child to give him the books that I would love for him to own, but for all children that are living this beautiful duality that we live as American Latinos and not just our children, but children and families that are open to see the, to seeing the value of bilingual literature, the value of learning a second language. And I started looking this time with, uh, at independent publishers mm-hmm. and I thought, sure enough, one of them would want to pick up this idea uh, and they did not. And I am on the phone with one of them and he says to me, you're this is not marketable. You're wasting your time. You shouldn't do this. And I had heard this before, but what was different here was that I didn't believe them this time. Mm -hmm. And that's when I said, I will have to find a way to do this myself. And at the same time, Ariana had just had her baby and um, she felt the same feelings that I felt when I was pregnant with my first And I went to her and I told her about Little Libros and this idea to create bilingual board books that celebrated us and our identity and our traditions. And that same day, we decided that we will do this and create the books that we wanted to have growing up. And six months later, we get a call from Target and a year after we shook hands, Ariana and I, our books were at Target stores across the country. Oh my gosh. Your face, Katie. It's incredible. <laughs> I'm like, I'm just so gripped. Sometimes I wish that this podcast, we published the video because I'm just like, so that is so incredible. And I'm really, truly sorry that that happened to you and that you had to go through that, but it's just really inspiring to hear your tenacity and that you didn't give up on this idea and you kept pushing, even though everyone told you no. Um, I also just watched your video on your campaign page before this call and to see where it is today, I'm just like blown away that it all really accelerated within a year after you guys shaking hands. It's amazing. It, it was pretty, it's pretty incredible. And I always say, you know, now looking back at that incident that happened, I think it was maybe the best thing that ever happened in my entire life. Um, Because I feel like as entrepreneurs, we're constantly being, the universe is constantly like, you know, knocking on your door, you Mm -hmm. know, giving you signs, you know, that you should do more. You should, you know, you have a bigger purpose, but we're constantly ignoring that feeling. And I feel that the universe was maybe tired of constantly knocking on my window and said, if you're not going to hear me by me knocking on your window, I'm going to have to take it. I'm going to have to destroy everything. Mm -hmm. I have to take everything away from you so you can finally see what you're meant to do. That was a very personal, that was a very personal story. So I'll I'll give a personal story of my own. My wife um, had a miscarriage um, with the first like time she got pregnant. And again, the second time. And, um, I'm sorry. you know, um, now we have three beautiful kids. Um, and I always think like, if she hadn't had those two miscarriages, we would not have these three kids. And wow. so it's another example, I think of where something, you know, beautiful and wonderful can come out of a place of great pain and, and loss at the time. Um, so thanks so much for sharing what an incredible story to start this uh, start this podcast no thank you for sharing that too I really I believe that you know at the moment it may feel that the world is coming down on us you know and we think that uh you know why us it's so unfair um you know we we're good people we do good so why are these things happening to us right 
but it, we don't realize that it's actually um, there's a reason and a purpose that's even bigger than us mm -hmm. for us to even understand at that very moment. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, can you walk us through after you shook hands what the first couple weeks, first couple months looked like? Like, where did you start? Yeah, so, you know, it was one of those situations where, um, you know, like Patty mentioned, um, as mothers, you don't really realize the things that you have to do for your children until you have children, right? You always try to make a better world for them. And this was something that was done for them and not just for them, but for everybody who was experiencing a similar situation is 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 us um so when we decided to to go for this and and create the company um patty and i come from completely different backgrounds you know she's always been in media in radio and you know has thrived in that and i've kind of been you know more the business side more of the uh business commercial commercial real estate and you know that was my background but when you have children and you you have these common interests you know we combine our interests and decided okay we both don't have publishing experience you didn't go to publishing school i didn't either so we have to figure this out what do we need to do right so we said okay let's figure this out um and let's ask our friend Google. <laughs> so, you know, what do we need to create a book? So that's basically how we started. It was very, um, you know, I don't, I don't have a, we didn't have a blueprint. It was more like we had to create our own blueprint because we weren't taught these things. And so uh, we decided to hire an illustrator. We, Patty and I both wrote the book. So we, we had an, we hired an illustrator and then we later figure out, figured out that we needed an ISBN for a book. So we got an ISBN. <laughs> and these are just some of the things that we had to figure out in the very beginning. Um, uh, I, I did have a business background and Patty had, you know, both Patty and I have created businesses in the past, so we kind of had an idea of where to start as far as setting up a company, mm -hmm. um, figuring mm -hmm. out the, you know, the LLC uh, structure and, you know, all of that. So we, we want to say that all of the businesses that we started in the past kind of prepared us for this specific moment. So, um, you know, that's, that's basically how we started when we shook hands. And, um, you know, like Patty mentioned, uh, three months later, uh, Target knocked on the door. Uh, they were very interested in our product. A few months later, they were in the stores. And, um, you know, that was just the beginning of something that would become what it is now. That's amazing. And so you're, you're on the shelves of Target. It, are you mostly selling through retailers? I think you mentioned Barnes and Noble on your profile. Is that is that the primary sales channel? I think you also mentioned B two B. Yeah, yeah. So so in uh, you know initially we were doing all the live work. We would literally go door to door, you know, knocked on bookstore stores and just try to sell our books. Mm -hmm. um, and that's what we did for the first several years. We did a lot of our sales was through grassroots events. So we would go to every single event where we thought we would sell books. Uh, not necessarily a book event. If there was a taco event, we knew our customers were there. You know, our target audience was there. So that's where we would go. Um, and that's sort of how we, we started uh, selling, you could say. Uh, and kind of getting a little bit more exposure in the community. Um, but it wasn't until 2008 when we met our distributor. Um, so we met a publishing company by the name of Gib Smith based out of Utah. We had conversations and uh, created a partnership and now they distribute our books. So um, they really helped us. They were the muscle for, for our distribution and helped us uh, get into multiple stores although uh, we did do a lot of the legwork so we were already at Target, Amazon, Barnes and Noble, um, you know Walmart uh, before the distribution so and, and that was all 
really just us two um, and, and the team that we had at the time. Wow. Um, did you guys have to raise capital to manufacture the books for those huge retailers or? No, no this was didn't. just, yeah, this was just our own money. Wow. Um, and it was actually the money from, in my case, um, after the fire, you know, the insurance gives you money to purchase, your, you know, furniture again, you know, the, the, the loss you had. Mm -hmm. um, and I decided to use that money to fund my half of Little Libros. Yeah, everything was pretty bootstrapped. Like we, we didn't get any funding, no investors, and were you Were you pitching uh, investors? Like, I'm curious, because what you were talking about with, um, you know, I think, I think you're saying publishers were like not picking you up and didn't think there was a market, which is just so crazy to even think that there wouldn't be a market for your books. But you know, um, we hear that a lot with uh, founders when they're pitching investors, right? And saying, oh, you know, this business isn't investment worthy. Um, so were you trying to pitch investors and, and getting negative feedback? Or were you just kind of able to grow through bootstrapping it and your own investment? And so you weren't even pitching investors? We were not, we did not pitch for a very long time. Mm -hmm. um, the first three, four years, this was just us, um, you know, what we wanted to do was first build this beautiful relationship with our customers, um, which we have done and, and we continue to do. Uh, we wanted to make, you know, we wanted our customers to trust us, to know what we were doing, um, create work on creating a beautiful product. And we, we, our strategy was always, you know, take, take it one step at a time. Mm -hmm. Um, we, and we knew that, you know, bringing in, someone once told me not all money is the same money. Mm -hmm. Bringing in other folks, you know, could have maybe changed that dynamic that Ariana and I are, you know, had, which was yeah. one step at a time. We have to yeah. build, you know, we're, we have to build something first. If you take venture money, then it kind of forces you down a route of hyper growth that you might not even want to go on or certainly not be kind of ready to embark on you. And, and we did talk about it. We had conversations about really taking this series and taking it to the next level to be able to scale, but it just didn't, it never felt right. And, and, and it didn't feel right because we felt like we had to convince these people that we are worth it, that we, that we are doing. Slight, slight difference with your WeFunder campaign. <laughs> <laughs> the right, I mean, you know, you still have to do that, but I'm saying like, we had to convince them that our business model or that our business um, mattered and that we were changing the world. We had to, you know, just- that, that is so cool to hear you say that because you just read the comments on your WeFunder campaign, right? And all of your customers, all of your investors, everyone it. that's super excited about what you're doing, they don't need, they already are convinced. Like, exactly. You know. They have been convinced since day one. Exactly. Yes. And I think, and that's yeah. the beauty about WeFunder and the beauty of crowdfunding that, you know, it takes away you know, so, you know, we, we, ha we were placed sometimes in, in rooms where we didn't even want to be in, but we felt we had to go because they're the ones with the checkbooks. Right. And then you, yes. you go, you get out of these boardrooms and you just feel deflated mm -hmm. because sometimes they, you know, they're patronizing you. Maybe, yeah. you know, they're they they see two Latina women and they're like, you know, can they do, you know, they're just kind of poking, just kind of trying to poke at you, you know, and it's like, you know, I, you're not even being serious with us. You're just here to mock us. And said, you know, sometimes that's how it felt. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What, um, yeah, that's, I hear that experience with a lot of the female founders that we work with on WeFunder, which is just so unfortunate. Um, and I've heard that crowdfunding, I mean, we, we have a lot of female founders who work with us and they're like, blown away like this is so much better than having to deal with like the traditional stiff white man VC that just doesn't take you at all seriously mm -hmm. um when did you guys learn of crowdfunding what made you decide to launch a WeFunder campaign so Ariana and I had been you know talking about the need to have to raise capital 
and we looked into uh, financial institutions, getting a loan, and we were in the process, and I remember Diana calling me saying, you know, we have to put our houses as collateral. And like, to me, it was almost like PTSD. I'm like, wait a minute, I already lost my house once. <laughs> you know, like you start thinking this way. And I'm like, for me, being a first generation American, I have a son, you know, I'm, you know, my mother is living with me, my sister. It's like, this is all we have. If I am gone tomorrow, this is it for my family. You know, this is what's going to help them move forward, mm -hmm. you know, what, alone without me. And it was, it wasn't so much fear or that I didn't trust me doing this collateral. It was more of, this is all we have. And it's unfair that we have to put this as exchange, you know, for this amount of, ca of money when they can see clearly that our company is thriving. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, you know, there's not, you know, it's, it's, it could be a little bit predatory at times. Mm -hmm. And then you have these high interest rates that are just ridiculous. Um, but we had these conversations, we met with some, you know, VC folks, you know, people uh, with um, very heavy checkbooks, um, but it just never felt right. And I remember, you know, I'm, I'm always one to ask God in the universe for a sign. And kind of, I feel that I kind of navigate my life, like, you know, the things will come to you, you know, when you're ready for them. And I'm watching Netflix on a Friday night. And I'm watching one of my favorite shows at the time, which is Club de Cuervos. It's a show about a soccer team. A father leaves the soccer team after he passes away to his two kids. And the entire show is about the sibling rivalry, egos, and, you know, who, who is the CEO, who's not, you know, this is my team, and et cetera. And I'm watching the last few episodes, the season finale. And the siblings uh, put their differences aside and they um, decide, both of them, that the true owners of the soccer team, the true people that have always believed in this team in the good times and the bad times was the town, was the community. Mm -hmm. And my jaw just dropped right there. And I'm like, this is the fucking sign. <laughs> that we were looking for <laughs> so I was like but wait, I'm like wait a minute is this something you can actually do is this legal you mm -hmm. know like does this happen because you know, it's television so I google it and the first thing that pops up is WeFunder and that's when I texted Ariana and I said Ariana we need to do this I just watched this on TV <laughs> and and we're and we start you know doing our research and we're like you know what this is it you know our we started this company with the purpose of ensuring that our community was our children, especially we were giving them quality products, quality books that will empower them, that will give them the tools necessary because Ariana and I know as first generation Americans, the challenges that come with that, how it's been, you know, we have for so many generations, our communities have been underserved, underrepresented and we wholeheartedly believe that books can change that mm -hmm. for our communities at the earliest age. So we're thinking, you know, so we have provided these beautiful books to our community. Our community has responded with so much love. And we've always known that the reason why we're thriving, it's not because it is because of our community. They are the ones buying our books. They're the ones purchasing our books. They're the ones telling other people about our products. And we're like, it would just be the right thing to do mm -hmm. that the people that have built this mm -hmm. should also own it. That is just the right thing to do. I love that. And, and it's kind of like what you were saying before, Ariana, right? Like you got to persuade VCs to invest and they're reluctant, whereas yeah. your, your audience and your customers, they're already persuaded. But also, this is kind of what you're getting at, Patty, is like, okay, if you guys build a big business here, profitable, you know, business, you're going to make some people rich, right? If, if people are investing, you're going to like help them to build wealth. 
And would you rather, you know, build wealth for those VCs that kind of maybe, you know, never really got it or your customers and um, community? Um, so this yeah, is that's... changing. I, I believe what WeFunder is doing is so radical that is actually going to change black and brown communities. It is that radical to finally give black and brown communities the the necessary tool to not just, you know, to, you know, to build wealth, something that, you know, that is so, it's not even part of our vocabulary in many ways. It's radical. It, it's going to, it's. Yeah. I love the double entendre of the word equity, right? We, we're equity crowdfunding. So your investors are owning equity equity in the Libros. Um, but obviously the other meaning of equity being, you know, we get to level the playing field here. And why should it be that like wealth is kind of increasingly concentrated in the hands of a privileged few accredited investor millionaires? Let's like democratize wealth and um, you know, kind of open the playing field for anyone to build wealth as an investor in in Lil Libros. I mean, maybe we can do, can you tell us like you've had a phenomenally successful campaign so far. Um, we were looking earlier, you, you've now passed $3 million raised from 8,061 investors. Um, one of my favorite things to do on WeFunder is to read the comments that investors um, leave when they when they invest. I'm sure you've you've done this, but you know, 2,514 comments of why people are investing and you read those and it's just probably much more inspiring for you, but it's very <laughs> inspiring for me to read those messages of support. Um, so you've had a phenomenally successful campaign. How did you do it? What's the secret to, to success? I think we've been very, very fortunate to have created a, com a community that has echoed our mm -hmm. mission, right? Mm -hmm. That has really, really supported us from the very beginning. And, and I think it, it comes down to, you know, we were creating these products, these books for them. And, you know, they, they were, receptive they understood it they we didn't have to explain anything to them and they and, and not only that but, but they they saw the growth and they saw how passionate we were as a company in in creating these these books and in these products and um you know it's um th there's no secret sauce it's just there's just you know when you do something good when you're fixing a problem um, you know, the, and, and you, you're finding solutions, you know, that success comes, you know, it just, it, it really does. And I think also, again, because you don't see Latinas in these positions, you know, it just doesn't, it, it doesn't happen as much as it should. Um, I've been working in media for tw over 20 years. And I remember when I started, it was always a challenge to, you know, even get folks that, you know, mm -hmm. on the show that were representative of this duality that we live in. Um, but to this day, you would think we are 60 million strong in this country. We're the largest minority. Um, yet we are not represented in media at all. It, you know, you, it, we're non-existent. And I remember, you know, there's this quote, and I'm going to just kind of, I'm going to butcher it, but I love it. Chris Rock said, you know, you would have to purposely not want to hire Latinos in Hollywood because mm -hmm. it's impossible to not see us. <laughs> like we're, <laughs> this is our city. So here comes two women, Latina first generation, who are creating these beautiful products for our children. And they see us, you know, they see themselves in us. You know, I've been able, you know, I've been able to leverage my, you know, my social media presence and, um, and they've known me since I started radio, you know, I've shared my entire life with them. They've known my ups and my downs. So they think of me as family and that's what I, you know, and that's, and that has been a blessing as well because they it's trust. The keyword is trust here. And we have been able to continue having that with each other, with our customers and us. Um, and that is the reason why we were able to raise $2 million in the, within the first five days 
on a holiday weekend, 4th of July, talking about the busiest weekend and, you know, in the year, because it's like, it's like you calling your best friend and telling her about your idea. And you're like, you don't got to tell me twice. I'm in, mm-hmm. you know, like, I don't need, like the same way, you know, when Ariana and I were on the phone the first time talking about little libros, I didn't know. It's like, you don't even have to explain to me. I'm in, let's do this. Mm-hmm. Because I trust you. And, and, you know, we trust each other. We know each other enough that we just know, our, we know of our values. And that is so important. Mm-hmm. And I, and I think companies and, you know, companies and now and small businesses, that's what's helping us in this space that that um relationship Mm -hmm. yeah kudos to you again for following your intuition giving the idea another shot like just reading through some of these comments uh esperanza says it's beautiful and empowering what you have created and now offering to the community i'd love to be a part of the company's growth thank you so much for the opportunity another person says for my daughter's uh, Siani says, as a Latina mother who's never taught in Spanish, these books help me give something to my children that I didn't get. We learn Spanish and our culture together. Thank you so much. Um, yeah, they're That's incredible beautiful. comments. Like you said earlier, Johnny, um, you know, the, the majority of our investors are first time investors. Mm-hmm. And that is so beautiful because what you guys have created is something that is accessible that is easy and that is going to educate an entire generation on building wealth for their future. So it's, it's pretty amazing to see that. Well, thank you guys for choosing to, you know, take a risk. Regulation crowdfunding is still pretty nascent, right? It's still Mm -hmm. a relatively, you know, um, less well-trodden path for raising capital. And so you could have gone, the more conventional route of raising from from VCs, and you are the ones, the founders that chose to raise this money from your community and give them a chance to own a piece of Little Libros. Hopefully, this build is the wealth. future. Mm-hmm. This is so good for small businesses. Yeah, you guys needed to to make it happen, and you did. So we are greatly um, honored to to get to work with you on this raise. Uh, one question that we ask every single founder or co-founders who come on the podcast, uh, what's one piece of advice that you have maybe for a Latina founder who's starting a company? Say yes now, do every, and figure it out later. (laughs) (laughs) Say yes to everything and figure it out later. (laughs) Love it. Believe in your community. Believe it. Believe in us. Believe in you. Love it. Thank you guys so much. This has been awesome. Uh, Really appreciate your time and and you sharing your story with us and excited to see where the campaign ends up. I think you're you're live for a few more weeks or months or so. Um, And yeah, really want to get this to, to 5 million. All right. We're excited. Thank you guys so much. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Adventure Capital. I hope you laughed, took notes, shed a tear, and most importantly, feel ready to go off on your own adventure. And remember, whenever you are ready, WeFunder is here to help.